Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12 and this is D&D 4.0. So the brand new release version of that in preparation for the 2024 um, but also in theory for 3.5. Now a caveat just remember that it's not advisable to upgrade. <laughs> so if you've got ongoing games and everything else there are virtually no mods available for um, the 4.0 at this point certainly nothing in the midi verse so midi qol chris's pre-made gambits all of those bits they are not here do not update um, but in the previous video or a couple of videos ago we looked at how you can potentially set up a second um, version of foundry on your machine so that you can go in and have a play which is exactly what i'm doing here now, what have I actually got? Let me show you what my setup is. Manage modules. I have got no modules installed, mostly because there are very few available. Um, the only thing I've got is I do have a copy of the 2024 um, Player's Handbook, which was released a couple of days ago. So we've got hold of that. So what I thought we would do, um, because Foundry hasn't changed, so all of our tools on the left hand side for building walls and building scenes and stuff, that's all exactly the same base foundry, but of course without the mods to support that, whatever mods you might be using for building stuff. Um, so we haven't got that. So there's no, and there's no point in looking at that at this point because it's the same. Same as we're doing in Curse of Strahd, um, except we've got extra tools in that, of course. So in this video, what I wanted to do really was have a look at what the resources are in the base 4.0. Again, with that recommendation that you don't jump. Don't do it. <laughs> All right. So what does this actually come with? So we got our SRD content that comes as standard we would expect um, and we also know that the SRD content so this is the 3.5 SRD content is pretty lacklustre so if we click on backgrounds you've got Acolyte that's it nothing else from the SRD and that's fine because remember the SRD stuff is completely free um, so that's like the uh, the free players handbook. Yeah, there's some basic classes and stuff. Uh, we don't want to look at that because, yeah, it doesn't actually give us anything. We have this, though. Because we've got the 2024 players handbook, we have the players handbook folder. And if we open this, we've actually got uh, a number of different things here. The first one is the players handbook. Here it is. Now, I'm not going to show you contents of it, obviously, because copyright and everything else. Um, but it's right here. And we've got everything that we would need. Now, I'm still waiting on my physical copy of the 2024 rule books to arrive. Their FedEx is late. Um, so they're going to arrive, hopefully, today. And I'll be able to get stuck in and actually look at those rules properly myself. I prefer to do that kind of detailed reading in a hard copy. Uh, everybody has their preference. Um, but we have a copy of it here as well because I've bought both, um, which is a bit crazy, I know, but there we go. Uh, <laughs> I like that hard copy, but I also need a copy in here if I'm going to be playing games and to be able to show you guys how it works. So let's just, um, for example, we can look at Barbarian and this is going to pop out for us a journal entry. We've got some beautiful images um, in the new player's handbook, which is absolutely great. And this is going to tell me a little bit about it. Uh, it tells me about becoming a barbarian. We've got those tables and things there as a first level, multi-classing, your class features. So we've got lots of different bits of information. Pretty much the entire player's handbook is in here. So if you're fine reading lots of stuff on screen, you may well just go, look, I'm just going to buy the Foundry version because it's all here. And there is nothing to stop me from, yeah, I possibly might, at my age, <laughs> I might want to make my text slightly bigger to make it easier to easier on the eyes for reading. Um, but I could just sit here and read the entire PHB right here and learn the whole thing. As I said, that's not my preference. I'm willing to spend the additional money for a hard copy. If nothing else, then um, I can actually hit my players with it if I need to. <laughs> sometimes they need a smack right <laughs> we're not advocating violence unless it's against your players and it's kind of you know expected to a certain extent so this is all here which is absolutely great so we have all the rules that we need we also have 
character classes here um, and if we look at barbarian we've got lots of class features we've got subclass features for the bard again we've got their class features we've got their subclass features um, there's loads loads of stuff in here so this the 4.0 really is the first major update to the D&D game engine since the integrations sorry the um since the working with Wizards of the Coast since that relationship started and they've obviously put a lot of effort into getting this right now that doesn't mean this stuff works out the box does it but we've got an awful lot more stuff than we ever had before um, for building our characters uh, backgrounds have gone and we now have character origins that's one of the changes from uh, for, for the uh, the 2024 version of the rules but we have got all these backgrounds we haven't just got acolyte like we have in the SRD we've actually got all these other things entertainer farmer um, hermit merchant some of these are similar and familiar to us but farmers a new one and again we can click on that and it gives us a bit of a description they get the feet tough for example animal handling and nature skill proficiencies uh, proficiency with carpenters tools and things like that which is cool um, and we also have the species so we no longer have and I'm sure you're all kind of aware there's loads of videos from people I haven't done a video on what are the changes because there's so many other people doing it and that's that's not that's not our back that's not what we do on this channel um, it's just you know content for content's sake um, other people doing that go watch theirs that's fine um, but we do have this change from races to species partly because of the connotations with that that word race um, uh, species in some way makes that a little bit clearer so we've got these and again this is the standard PHB um, so we've got Azamar in here Dragonborn are in here Dwarves of course we've got our three lots of elves our drow or high notice our drow not dark elf um, and that one has purple skin so there are there are definitely some changes that they have done to the races and the classes and things like that we know that Goliaths are now apologies for that um, Goliaths are now part of the um, core races which is interesting halflings humans orcs notice humans we've got humans we haven't got the um, variant humans anymore but we've also got our three branches of tiefling are kind of built in here now I must say the images are you know look at the elf of images you know they've done a really good job with a lot of them I must say the tiefling ones look really quite boring by comparison but it's still early days <laughs> we might see some changes um, but yeah these ones with the white background it's like yeah maybe you could have done a little bit more with that but whatever it doesn't matter it's all about the game um, character origins we were just on that um, oh, there was also traits in there as well. I should open that folder. Um, so we've got the traits for, for example, Dwarves, Dwarven Resilience. All of that lot has come with the PHB. We have the feats. If you're not aware, feats have changed. Um, there are more feats. Interestingly, there are feats that go back to the second edition D&D skills and powers lot. I notice Cleave is one of the things that's made a uh, it's made a, a comeback. Um, I'm not sure where that might be. It might be under something else. It might not be under Cleave. Um, but absolutely, that was a thing that used to everybody loved taking cleave. Uh, but we've got these epic boom feats as well as these style feats, general feats, origin feats, and things like that. Um, so depending, we saw farmer gets tough as an origin feat and things. So they're all in there, which is nice. We've got our spells. This is not going to be uh, a huge surprise to us, I suppose. But there are different spells now. There's more, a lot more spells in the PHB. Some of these are going to seem very similar and very familiar. But what I would warn you is if you are using the 2024 stuff, just be aware that some of the spells will work differently. And that is going to be, for anybody who's making that transition and has been playing for a long time, you'll know that every time they change an edition, you get stuck in your head with the old rules. And I do it all of the time. You know, oh, but Magic Missile does this. It's like, no, no, that was like three editions ago. <laughs> it doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> Stuff like that. So it's going to be confusing. So we're going to have to kind of like read these. Does Bless still work the same? You bless up to three creatures. That's the same. Um, whenever they take a, um, 
attack roll or saving throw, they get a D4 extra. Okay, so that's the same. That's not changed. Um, not from 3.5. Um, but even things like range and stuff you may have found have changed a bit. Um, but yeah, so we've got this beautiful new interface as well. It's lovely um, for these. So we've got all of our first level spells in there. Um, we've Of course, we've got our cantrips and things. Blade Ward, Chill Touch. A lot of these are very um, familiar. We've got new icons for things like Guidance. That used to be a blue one. Uh, poison Spray, etc. Lots of things we're very familiar with. Lovely Jubbly and... Magical berries. Ah, so I wonder if that's for things like good berry. Um, because eating a berry restores one hit point. That sounds very much like. That's, apologies, I haven't closed. Uh, haven't closed that down. Um, but yeah, things like good berry. Oh yeah, there it goes. It says it right there. Boom, good berry. So when you cast good berry, it actually gives you this item. Uh, I modded that myself in um, for Curse of Strahd because I've got a druid and I know she uses Goodberry all of the time. So I actually created a an item. So when she casts that, I chuck it in her inventory. Um, and it does this. Yes, basically I created the Magical Berries item. Um, but that's cool. Anyway, getting off track, of course, because that's what we do. Equipment, adventuring gear. So all of these basics, we would expect to see all of this standard PHB stuff. And of course, when the um, Dungeon Master's Guide comes out, we may find there's additional stuff added into this. Uh, it comes with roll tables already. What's this about? I don't know because I've not looked at it yet. Uh, chapter 2, Standard Languages. Oh, uh, let's roll on it and see what it does. <laughs> uh, language, Common, Origin, Sigil... Halflings, halflings. Okay, so I'm not sure what that quite what that's for. Um, I don't know what this chapters thing is for because I have literally just done this. I've not looked at anything. Oh, descriptions by ability scores. Why is it a table? Hmm. Tactless. Okay. High, inspiring. Okay. No, no idea. But anyway, they've included these tables for us. Um, we'll work out as we go. Now, somebody's already writing in the comments going, it's for this, it's for this, it's for this. This is literally the first time I clicked record and started opening stuff right in front of you. So uh, it's always interesting for you to kind of go, he hasn't got a clue what he's doing, has he? <laughs> and we've got an actors as well. Um, companions, otherworldly steeds, primal companions, conjurations. Isn't this nice? Animated objects. Oh, look, tiny animated objects already there. Conjured Fae, Flaming Sphere, The Light Spell. Awesome. Woo! And look, it does indeed do this. Now, I, I was already aware of Light Spell because Drazimo's been playing and has already shown stuff off. But just dragging that immediately out, we've got a working Light Spell. Even though I've not really got a scene or a map there. It's created this actor for us for that. Same with Mage Hand. There we go, we've got a little Mage Hand. I know that's really small because I'm zoomed out. Um, there you go. It's actually got a little ghosty hand as well. Isn't that nice? Um, spiritual weapon. There's already a icon for that. So we've got tons of these things. These actors already there. Now bearing in mind, now it's got these creatures. This is this is all within that conjurations um, folder, etc. The summons and things like that. Example characters are in here. As example, barbarian. Oh, we saw that picture a little while ago, didn't we? It was uh, That's the image that they've actually got for it. Um, so, yeah, there's loads and loads of stuff that comes from the PHB immediately in here. So, just to clarify, the 4.0 D&D is the game engine. The stuff we're looking at at the moment is the D&D 2024. You can play 3.5 on the 4.0 game engine. And you can play 2024 in the um, in the 3.3.1 game engine. Okay, they're not intrinsically linked at all. This is not suggesting that if you update to 4.0, that you have to use the 2024 rules. No, just bear in mind, of course, that as it moves forward, because of that um, relationship with um, uh, Watsi, they will be kind of 
building the Foundry D&D system more supportive of the uh, the new 2024 rules. But this is all coming because I've got the 2024 rulebook in here. If I had the 3.5 rulebook, the uh, 2014 edition, I'd be getting that stuff. But we didn't get anything like this stuff. This is really, really good. And to be honest, this is encouraging me to think about switching over to 2024 purely on the basis of the support in Foundry for things like the PHB. I'm not going to do it mid-game, because that would be insane. In the same way, I'm not going to upgrade to 4.0 midway through a campaign. We're going to play Curse of Strahd, so I'm probably going to be on 3.3.1 for ooh, maybe the next year because Curse of Strahd is a long game. <laughs> or it can be a long game if they don't all die, get bored, or move away, get married. <laughs> whatever, it, whatever happens to players, um, you've got to be in it for the long haul. But I just thought that was really, really cool to give you a little showing of this. Now let's actually open this character. Now this is an example one, um, and we can see what we've got going on here just kind of as a first glimpse. The character sheet is the same. This looks all familiar. We've got the same imagery and stuff. So the fact we've moved over to 4.0 game engine, that hasn't changed, which is great. But of course, this character is going to be a 2024 one. Um, so this is a humanoid Goliath um, who has a sailor background and again one of the things I love about Foundry uh, and these items is you can just hover over so what does a sailor background mean and it, it apart from the fact that it's in the character sheet you can just hover over it and it will tell you those tool tips are just brilliant we've got our languages we've got our weapons um, that we've got weapon mastery so we've got a little it's really small We've got a little look like a medal icon next to great axe and hand axe. Um, and hovering over it, is that going to pop up again for me? Did I have to click it? It did, you saw it, did it? It did, it popped up. It said, there we go, weapon mastery as opposed to um, just doing it over the normal ones. So that's uh, that would suggest that that's instantly showing us what they are, which is great. Tools, I've got navigators tools. That's pretty cool. What we've got on the next tab, of course, this is just equipment. This is not going to be anything amazeballs, I wouldn't have thought, because it's just equipment, uh, which is good. Uh, features, we've got our rage that we would expect to see, our weapon mastery, um, and things like that, powerful build. Now, some of these, we're kind of go, well, hang on a minute, what is that? Because, again, 2024 rules, some of this will have changed. Um, so we're not looking at detail of those. Um, new effects what's that our oh, tavern brawler uh powerful build unarmored defense so it's got these things in there why that's called new effect that looks like somebody's forgot to rename that at some point they've uh, created the new effect and not renamed it there's little things like that that absolutely will get picked up and um corrected as we go forward i have no doubt but yeah that's a that's a bit of a boo-boo isn't it <laughs> I mean, it's no worse than I would do. Um, and we've got, obviously, all of our conditions and stuff down here. We would expect to see things like, you know, we're invisible and what we're not. Cool. And our normal, what we would expect to see, our biography here. Um, and we can see alignment, personality, rebellious and vengeful. That doesn't sound like a barbarian at all. So that's pretty cool. We've got that. So we've got a barbarian here. Now, what, how, what say you that we... Um, where was it? Example characters. Let's pull out. Uh, let's pull out a cleric and slap a cleric down. Have a little look at this again. Default character, as you just saw. It's going to be all the same, but we can look at spells here. Guidance, sacred flame, um, and all sorts of things we've got like that. Very common uh, sets of spells, starting without any spell slots. That's interesting. Now, how about we just uh, let's do a little brief tiny little combat to just see how this works for us now of course you know my combat carousel <laughs> i've got my combat carousel <laughs> i love that so much oh let's uh let's give it a go so we're going to start off with the with the cleric here uh, i've got obviously i've got no gridded anything so um we're just going to do very very basic stuff let's try and make this sheet a bit smaller let's just do a couple of basic attack rolls see what happens cast a couple of spells um let's uh we're going to attack with that mace shall we 
So again, we've got no automation of any description. This is all the, the old way. I haven't even got dice so nice. So we can hit, uh, we can do our damage, etc. Five points of damage. We can apply that and that has indeed worked. Now you notice I haven't been in and changed the tokens, given them health bars or anything like that. Um, so out of the box, that seems to be working absolutely fine. Let's try a couple of spells. Um, let's try Guiding Bolt. That's always a fun one. So we're going to cast this. Yes, please. Uh, we're going to make our attack roll, of course, because we're doing it basics the hard way. Yes, we can now roll our damage. Uh, and then we can apply that damage. So we've got, understandably, we've got no um, animations. We've got no automations or any of that stuff. So it really is as core as we can. However, we've got an icon appear at the top here. Let's have a little look blooded so blooded is uh, as you have seen i've used the midi qol condition thing to say if they fall below 50 percent hit points it will give them a bloodied icon we've just taken enough damage to hit us to zero hit points now is it this powerful it's not going to tell us on here it's one of these new abilities um is it powerful build no it's to do with grappled unarmored defense See, this is one of those things that is a rule change that I'm not familiar with enough yet, although some of you absolutely will be saying, oh, well, we already know what that is, um, where we've hit zero hit points, but we haven't actually uh, died. We are bloodied instead. So we've got some of that built in automatically, which is good. So it's already recognising that stuff. Um, let's heal you up. There we go. The power of the DM interference, eh? Uh, and let's just have a, let's just make an attack back the other way, um, just to you know keep it even. Um, and we can use uh, what, what we got here. We got this great axe here, so we can attack with that. Obviously, that's going to hit, <laughs> uh, and we can apply that damage. There we go. And you're bloodied as well. Okay, so that bloodied, dropping you to zero, one hit point. It's bloody because they dropped to one hit point, not zero. So maybe that's not anything to do with the Barbarian feature at all. It might be only when the Barbarian is raging or something. I don't know. I haven't read the handbook yet. Um, but we have already got the checking whether it's hitting targets. That's all core function. Or, you know, even though it's only telling us, it's not actually doing it. Um, but that's all in there. Everything looks really nice and slick with no automations, just running that little bit of combat there, out of the box, I think it would be fair to say you absolutely could go and run a campaign out of the box just with a copy of the player's handbook added in to get your player characters. Uh, and of course, um, have we, well, we probably haven't got any monsters from here because we shouldn't do, but we have got the SRD, so we could still pull out... Uh, monsters from the SRD if we wanted to you know okay might be a bit excessive for this particular encounter first level characters um, but we can just pull out whatever we like and you can go with it so even with just the foundry 4.0 plus the player's handbook you've actually got enough there to run a game if you wanted to now there's lots more to look at there's lots more to play with um, until I kind of read the rules and stuff, we're not going to do any like building characters from scratch or anything like that because I need to know what I'm doing a bit more. Um, or otherwise, it's just going to be a mess, isn't it? <laughs> and really frustrating for you guys. But I just wanted to show you this is what it looks like. PHB is in. Um, we've got loads of these features straight from the player's handbook. Um, in here which is really really good all of these compendiums which is fantastic including players handbooks uh, sorry player characters that we can start off with and actually having a copy of the players handbook nice and easy to reference here which is beautiful no mods which is a bit scary and terrifying because um, you know I like my mods especially some of them I <laughs> don't think I can live without now 
Um, but there we go. Just thought I'd give you a little introduction to what you actually get if you are in Foundry 4.0 and you have the 2024 digital version of the player's handbook. Now this does, for some people, this raises a question of what do you do with regard to, if you choose to, purchasing the player's handbook. You've got three options. You can purchase it through D&D Beyond, which means you won't have this. You'll have to use DDB Importer, uh, like we have done previously, to pull stuff through, um, which is fine, but it's not necessarily um, as easy and as slick as this. So your second option is to buy a hard copy version of the 2024 rules, um, which of course means that you would have to build all of these things yourself. You're going to be limited to the SRD content, which is very limited. Um, so then you're going to have to build all these things yourself in there. And for most people, if you're using Foundry, that's going to be a no-no. And the third option is to purchase that PHB through Foundry itself, and then you get this beautiful way of doing it. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to do, um, because it's entirely up to you what's going to work for you. I would suggest that you would want to consider, if you're running all of your games through Foundry, buy the PHB through Foundry. Um, <laughs> because it's here. Uh, you haven't got to worry about integrations. You haven't got to worry about DDBI importer working well or not working or only bringing some things in and not others. You don't have to worry about it. It's, it your stuff's already here. And it's why I chose to buy the 2024 book through Foundry rather than through um, uh, rather than through D&D uh, &D Beyond. But I also bought a physical copy of the book because that's how I prefer to read it. Anyway, enough gabbling. I hope that was interesting. Um, again, don't jump to 4.0 yet unless you don't have a game running and you've got nothing better to do but to go and play with it or you want to try setting up a brand new game using it because you've got no automations. So just, just don't do it. Uh, but go in and have a play. Go watch that video about how to set up a, a secondary server. Um, and then you can go and have a play just like I am and just have a fiddle around. Anyway, stop gabbling. Um, next video, we will get back to doing a bit of building, I think, because we've got to push through Curse of Strahd and stuff like that. Um, the series of looking at add-ons, just before we go, because, you know, there's always something else, isn't there? The series of looking at add-ons is kind of at a pause right now because nobody's kind of making new add-ons and any add-on that is... If we do a video on a new add-on, it's going to be changing very, very soon. So we're going to kind of pause on those for the moment unless we get anything particularly like, oh, wow, this is it. Um, and then we will see quite a few add-ons become redundant um, as we move forward with the 4.0 stuff. So they may not be required at all. Um so, um, yeah, it's a bit silly to carry on with that series at the moment. But if you do have special requests, if there's something specific you want to see, um, either in Foundry 4.0, sorry, um, the D&D 4.0, or um, something else in 3.3.1, um, drop it in the comments. Let me know what, what, what interests you, what you would like to see, and uh, we'll see if we can accommodate that for you. And just a reminder that um, you can become a member of this channel, and uh, those second-tier members get access to the discord where they can make requests directly on videos and those are the ones we try to prioritize wherever possible so thank you for listening have a great day enjoy your gaming and exciting times i think for D, &D in foundry exciting take care everybody i'll see you in the next one